Hello my beautiful bastards, welcome to the Full Mage Open World PvP Guide and today we'll be covering the skills, we'll be covering some techniques you can use, some combos, everything that I think is going to help you out with this. So stay tuned, there'll be timestamps down in the description below, also I'll have a link to the uh, builds for both the fire stuff and the ice gauntlet as I only have the ice gauntlet as at level 18 in this video because I'm a little scrub. So go check that out make sure that you're seeing all the passives and let's get straight into it so firstly let's just go over the fire staff fire staff the three abilities that i have here is pillar of fire fireball and burnout so burnout here is really good it's your mobility spell it not only does damage but it also burns the target uh, what's necessary for this to be viable is this passive down here, which makes it go 50% further. This is a significant amount. Like, you can gap close or get away with this ability quite easily with this passive. So it's really important that you have that. Then let's look at uh, Fireball here. Fireball does 140% weapon damage and it leaves a burning field on the ground. Um, it's not too important about the burning field except for a couple of combos that I'll show you later in the video, but it's mainly about the third passive here. Oh, sorry, second pack of passive here, um, which makes your direct hits with Fireball give you 10% of your maximum mana. Um, and it reduces your cooldown by 7%, which is nice as well. This is really easy to hit people with. It's got such a big hitbox that it's almost like too easy to hit people with fireball. So lots of damage, gives you mana back, gives you um, cooldowns back. Can't go wrong. Pillar of Fire, extremely broken right now. Like you can double hit with Pillar of Fire. I don't think it is intended to be that way, but that is definitely what happens. And I'll show you how to do that a bit later. But Pillar of Fire is really, really strong. These other abilities that we have are just not that good for open world PvP. Meteor Shower is really good for wars, but we'll talk about that later. So moving on to the passives, the fire staff is really good at like mana regeneration and also putting burn on your target. Like there's a lot of passives that help you burn more or do something when they are burned. So let's just go over those so then I can show you how powerful these can actually be. First one here is Kindle. So Burning lasts 20% longer. Pretty simple. It lasts longer, therefore you can get more stacks, uh, therefore more burn damage. Singe, so when you crit, you will cause burning as well. And then you've got this one here, which your light attacks cause enemy to burn as well. These work really, really well together with this perk right here. So let it burn. Whenever you do burn damage, you gain 10% fortify. So not only from your light attacks, you're getting burn, your crits, you're getting burn, and you're getting fortify for the whole time that that's up. So lots of damage mitigation, very good for you overall. Not only that, there's flare. So heavy attacks no longer consume mana. Combined with spell focus, heavy attacks restore 5% of your max mana on hit, means that you're getting free mana regeneration. The other ones are just quality of life things. So heavy attacks reduce your fire stuff cooldowns by 10% on hit. That's just another thing that makes heavy attacks so strong. Spell Slinger, your abilities have an extra 15% chance to critical strike. Great, more crits, more burn, more fort, right? So that's really, really good. Um, profit of a Fire God while holding a Fire Staff, your critical strike damage is increased by 20%. That's just awesome. Like, just more damage. Everyone likes more damage, you know what I mean? <laughs> Can't go wrong with more damage. This one right here is pretty niche, but when you are able to use this to your advantage, it's heaps of damage. So. Basically, it's every 30 seconds, you get this Rune of Helios ring underneath you, which I will show you again later in combos, uh, that increases your spell damage by 30% while you're standing in the rune. Uh, yes, you are on the move quite a lot when you're in open world PvP, but when it does go off, it's really good. Like as long, if you can get an opportunity to use your ice gauntlet abilities to hold them in place and then this pops off, it's really good. It's really good for the initiation as well. All right, now let's go over the Ice Gauntlet. Three abilities that I've got are Ice Storm, really strong, lots of damage. Ice Shower, really good utility, very good CC. And Entomb, extremely OP in my opinion right now. So Ice Storm right now, like I've gone down all the way, 
but this last passive here as of today's date is really buggy. So if you have this passive, when you put Ice Storm down, if you switch weapons, your Ice Storm just disappears, which is kind of crap, but it doesn't really matter. If you don't want to run this, that's fine. Put it into another passive elsewhere that you think is a, uh, a bit better so you can switch weapons and stuff like that. But for me, I like it. I think it's really, really strong, especially in 1VX scenarios. All of these are really important. The passives, incoming damage is increased by 10% for three seconds to enemies in Ice Storm if below 50% health. Basically like an execute. It is only 10% damage, but it's very, very helpful. People are lower than 50 all the time in the open world. Next one, Ice Storm mana cost is decreased by 80% at full mana. Not really too important. You're going to be casting this basically off cooldown, but for that first one that you drop, really cool. And then you've got the last one, which is that buggy one, increase damage by 10% for each enemy in Ice Storm. This does include mobs, just so you know. So if they're near like a wolf or they're getting chased by some sort of uh, monster or you are, you can put your storm down and anything that's in there increases it by 10%. Next one is Ice Shower. I would go into this next one as well, this next passive as well, just so you know, you'll see in the build, but I shower, this is huge. I shower is ridiculous when it comes against melee characters. Uh, they can basically do nothing to get towards you. If you catch them in this, you can dance in and out of it and like basically have them on the back foot the entire time. So really like I shower, I'll be showing a couple of combos with that later and what you can do with it. In Tomb, extremely OP. You get 100% of your mana back and you can use it as a knockback uh, spending 20 mana if you do uh, the left mouse button while you're in it or you can just break it using no mana with your right click or just pressing the skill again. Um, I've also got the first passive here which is increases defense by 25% for three seconds after breaking out of Entomb because people tend to like swing on you in your Entomb. You can dodge roll out of it as well but in the case that they do hit you, 25% damage reduction. Can't complain with that, right? Okay, so the passives on this side, they are fair decent, but the main reason we've got all of these is because we want to get ultimate chill. This is the main thing we're looking at here. All these are like frosted area things, like recover 15 mana after doing uh, a critical hit. That's great, good um, for mana uh, retention. Hitting with three consecutive light attacks. I generally wouldn't go into stuff like this, but because you need the 10 to get down to ultimate chill, I put it in there. Ultimate chill basically makes any bad passive void because chill targets increasing ice damage by 35% for three seconds. This is insane. And you can definitely tell when this procs. So basically a lot of these passives are just for that. The main thing to look at here is getting this all the way down and getting your ultimate chill. On this side, it's pretty good. Increased speed by 10% in a frosted area. Just helps you get away from people if you drop a dome on yourself. Reduce all active cooldowns for ice abilities by 20% when casting an ability in a frosted area. Good quality of life thing there. And then casting an ice ability creates hardened layout granting 20% fortified for two seconds. So basically, if you combine these two, you can tell that the damage reduction is really good. So you can cast an ice ability, which gives you 20% fortify, and then you've got this. So when you break out of your entomb, you've got 25% damage reduction for three seconds. So if you were to drop your dome, you're in your dome, then you cast entomb and break it immediately, these two will stack. So if you get hit in that time, that it's 45% damage reduction for any hit that happens in that time. Okay, before we start getting into the combos, I'd like to show you the gems that I'm putting into my weapons. I've been putting the Malachite gems, which are the ones that are 8% damage against targets uh, in an active crowd control status. So a slow, stun, or root, which is awesome because the Ice Gauntlet is basically all of those things. So every time you get any Ice Gauntlet ability off, you're getting 8% damage. I'm only using the little rank two ones for now because they're very, very cheap on the trading post. And I know that I'm turning over gear quite quickly, but in future, you wanna go for the best possible rank gem in this if you can. For your gear, you want all diamonds. Like these are really, really good, really diverse at the moment. Physical and elemental damage absorption. You never know what you're gonna be coming across in open world PVP. So having resistances in both is really strong. A nice little tip to know at the moment is 
using honing stones in open world. The tool tip for this is actually bugged at the moment, but basically what it does is give you 10% extra damage for 10 minutes. These honing stones on the trading post at the moment are so cheap. It's so worth using and it's a 10% damage increase. Like why the hell would you not do it? So using those to your advantage is really, really good. So firstly, let's look at the fire staff and the ice gauntlet and their projectiles. So what not a lot of people would know is that the light attack from the fire staff and the ice gauntlet has a smaller hitbox to when you do a heavy attack. So your light attack is less likely to hit and your heavy attack is more likely to hit. To prove this, I'll show you on this little dummy man here, Mr. Straw Man. So I'm gonna light attack here in this same location, right? I'm not gonna move my mouse, can't hit, right? Not hitting him at all. Then you wanna switch to your ice gauntlet, same deal. Light attacks, not hitting at all, right? No deal, right? Switch back to the fire stuff, do a heavy attack and you get the hit. Ice gauntlet, do a heavy attack and you get the hit. So. What this means is that the projectile itself is larger, um, so therefore more likely to hit. Fire staff, you should almost always be doing heavy attacks unless you have really high mana pool and you wanna apply burn for that fortify that we talked about earlier. Ice Gauntlet, I'd say you can solely do heavy attacks. They are so strong, especially if you're on, in your own ice storm. They get you get increased damage when you're in your in a frosted area, and they're gonna take more damage because you're elite skill ultimate chill. So definitely be abusing those um, heavy attacks on Ice Gauntlet. Also with Ice Gauntlet, I don't think that the projectiles are any bigger or smaller from the fire staff to the ice gauntlet but the ice gauntlet definitely feels like you can hit a lot easier with it i don't know if that's just a placebo if it's just me but generally um ice gauntlet feels like i can hit a lot more frequently with All right, let's get into some of the combinations, a couple of tips, a couple of tricks that'll help you with this build. Um, first one's really easy. Like for a defensive, if you have low health and you've got your entomb up, you can get your mana and your health back. So all you have to do is eat your food and then entomb. If they don't hit you within the time it takes for the animation to finish with your food and for you to get into entomb, you'll get a fair bit of your food recovery in the time of your entomb. Really good tip. I wasn't using it at the start, but once I started doing it, I was getting so much more value out of my entombs. Okay, firstly, I wanna show you how to position your pillar of fire to get that double hit. Now, this is extremely important because I don't think this is the way it's supposed to intend to be, but it works really well. You sometimes get some really big hits and you're just absolutely melting people with this. It doesn't work on the dummy, but I will show you a video after this on a creature to show you that the double hit actually works. On the dummy, I'm just gonna show you where the positioning is. So if you look here and you get your ring, it's about three quarters from the center of the circle outwards. So you can see where the dummy is positioned. It's almost on the outer ring of the pillar of fire. About here, when you do it, should get the double hit. Obviously, it's a dummy. It doesn't show us the double hit, but I'll show you right now in a video um, that the double hit actually does work. Okay, so with Ice Gauntlet, uh, the skills Ice Storm and Ice Shower have a significant delay between each skill if you're um, casting them back to back. So let me just show you that now. So if you cast Ice Storm, I can spam Ice Shower and look how long that takes to come out. Like that takes a really, really long time. There's a big delay. You've got a lot of time where you're doing nothing, but there are ways to get around this. So once the cooldowns go down, boys, come on, come on, come on, come on. There they are. So. First thing you can do is cast Ice Storm, do a light attack straight away into Ice Shower. Now that's significantly quicker. That's gonna help you so much in like a PvP scenario because you're not gonna have to wait as long between your skills. There is also another way that I found that if you do Ice Storm, you can do Ice Storm, dodge roll into an Ice Shower. Now you can do any direction, I just did a back roll, but you can see that the transition time between Ice Storm into Ice Shower is a lot quicker when doing these things. So definitely make sure you use these to your advantage, otherwise you're just gonna be sitting there spamming the ability and nothing's gonna happen. 
Um, but these have really, really helped me in a lot of open world PvP scenarios. So hopefully it helps you as well. Another really great combo that you can do, which might be obvious to some, is using your ice shower to your advantage. So anytime you get an ice shower off on your opponent, you can switch to the fire stuff and get a free pillar of fire for the double hit. Or if that's on cooldown, you can go straight into your fireball and they're gonna be standing in that constant um, burn damage as well because they're stuck in your CC. Something really important um, is keeping your ice shower between you and your opponent. Now, what I mean by that is if you do not catch them in the ice shower, so if they're coming after you and you do a backwards dive into an ice shower, you catch them in it, not a problem. You don't need to use this technique because you've got them in it and you're, you're firing them down. You're, you're putting damage into them for free, right? But what I do mean when we wait for this cheeky little cooldown is that if you don't catch them in the CC, so if you miss, right, and like you're just using it as a defensive or you're using it to like bide your time to get some cooldowns, what you want to do is always keep your ice shell between you and your opponent. So when they're a bit far away, probably this far away with the dummy, you can put your ice shower down and then if he's moving around, you can move around your ice shower, keeping the ice shower between you and your opponent. Your ice shower lasts seven seconds with that first passive. So it's a long time for you to dance around and keep especially those melee comps like at bay while you're trying to think of what you're going to do next. If you want to wait out like some of your pots cooldowns, like you get endless things. It's basically just stalling them out. With ice shower and entomb combined, like you have so much time like to wait for your ability to wait for your, your pots or, or wait for whatever you're trying to set up against this player. So definitely use it to your advantage. Another thing you can do is the stamina exhaustion into burnout. Um, you can also go into Entomb as well if you really want to, but generally I just do the burnout phase. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if you're in a circumstance where you need a double dodge roll and you need to exhaust your stamina, but you don't want to get hit, you can double dodge roll back, for instance, go into your burnout. And by the time your burnout's finished, you're already at 65% um, of your stamina back. If you really, really want to save yourself, you can switch to the ice gauntlet and entomb so you don't get hit. Your stamina comes back to 100 and then you can go back to doing your dodge rolls as normal so ladies and gentlemen that is all for the full mage open world pvp guide if you want any other guides they will be in my description below i've got a war build that i've done as well um, that's down there if you want to um, check that out without further ado i'll see you in the next one